What's up guys? Today we're going to go over how to use Tinker's Construct. So we're going to go over how to make customized tools, um, say, you know, tools with different materials and all that kind of stuff, as well as with the modifiers and how to make like the, you know, the stencils and stuff like that. Um, we're also going to go over how to use the forge. We'll do this first. Um, how to make the forge, how some of the pieces work, as well as how to then melt down the ore more efficiently than a furnace would, as well as how to alloy things together um, and casting all that stuff. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, so first what you'd probably want to do is you want to make the materials in new books if you didn't already start with it with whatever mod pack you're using. Um, this is Minecraft Eternal, but most of the time it's the same for Tigger's Construct. So the way you make the materials in you is you make a uh, crafting table, of course, and then you make stencils, which you do by using sticks and wooden planks, and you put them in this pattern here. Um, the stencils you'll use, or the rather the blank patterns you'll use for the rest of the mod. Um, it just so happens they can also make the books using a normal book and a blank pattern. So then you open this up, and this kind of gives you a rundown and a tutorial of how to do everything. Um, some of the stuff is kind of vague, and it's kind of hard to know what to use and it's also just like a huge amount of information like it gives you all of the um all of the stats for all of the materials it then gives you the bow materials gives you the modifiers that you can have on your tools uh which we'll get into later um the first thing we need to do is build this thing which is the smeltery which is used for making um alloys melting down uh ore which is more efficient than melting it down in a furnace normally to get just like ingots and stuff um and this will also let you make metal tools because the tools that are like made out of gold or silver or whatever uh need to be casted using molten metal so we need to have this structure somewhere so what you want to do is make a large area a large enough area to have that the forge itself is five by five blocks, but then of course we have these on the side. So I usually usually leave about eight by eight or, or rather nine by nine around it because it's five by five and then we add one and two, so then seven by seven. And then I like having two tiles to stand on, uh, but that's just completely up to you. Um, sometimes I'll build it into like the side of a mountain or something. Uh, so I have this area. So what it wants you to do, it's it wants you to build this material here. Um, I think these are called seared bricks. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't exactly tell you how to make them. I thought it did in the book, but I guess I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so it's called grout. You want to make grout. Um, so in your handy dandy menu over here, you can figure out how to make grout, um, which is gravel, sand, and clay. Um, it, you know, it uses a lot, but it also makes eight of them. I usually start with two stacks of grout myself, um, but it, it just it just depends on how big you want to build the forge. So I'll just spawn those in real fast because I'm not going to mine all that. So I'll get two stacks of sand, two stacks of gravel, and then I'll get like a half stack of clay or whatever. Take clay blocks. Okay. And then we can just craft it like this. Um, we can do this, that, and then do that. So then that makes a bunch of grout. I actually made four stacks. Um, two stacks I think is okay at the beginning. Um, you can use more than that because you can make the forge as tall as you want it to. Um, but then what we want to do is we want to smelt all of the grout. So like if we just get, you know, a furnace, not that many. <laughs> um, and this is usually the first thing I do, so I usually don't have anything more fancy than just a normal furnace. We smelt it and it will smelt it down into the seared bricks that we then use for everything else. Um, Cause like you make the, for example, um, I've never built one looking like this. You don't need to build the corners. Um, you know, you don't need to build the corners. But you want to make a bunch of these blocks right here. The, whoa, These, like, just solid blocks. Um, but you will need some other res resources, and mainly glass, to make the windows and, like, the controller and some of the valves and stuff. Um, but mainly you just need a lot of the seared bricks. Um, so this is how you make the seared bricks, and then we'll smell all of these real fast. All right, so now that we have our seared bricks, what we want to do is also get a decent amount of glass as well. So what we're going to want to do is make one controller, which we do by doing just this pattern right here. It makes one smeltery controller. We also want a tank, which I believe is the same thing, but with glass in the middle. Um, yeah, we can make one of these. We can also make more than one of them, um, but we don't need more than one. Um, and then also what we want is just a whole bunch of these normal ones i'll make several stacks worth of them i'm not used to the modded uh 
dragging down and doing this. Um, and then also what we can do is we can make windows. And I like windows a lot. We can either make these windows or we can make these windows. And these windows are a little bit better looking, I think. But they also um, can look weird in other situations. So I'll make these ones. I'll make, uh, let's make six. All right. And then, um, and then we're good to go. Okay. And I'll make another round of these ones. So what we want to do is we make a three, uh, I forgot I wasn't creative. Hold on. Let's get a shovel real fast. Okay. So we want to do a three by three area on the ground and this is the base of it. Um, you can do the corners if you want. In that case, it's five by five. I usually don't. The only one I do it under is the actual tank in which the lava is in. So I do that. And I put the tank here. And that's because when the tank is empty, you can see the block under it. Um, I put the smelter controller somewhere there. I don't think it actually matters where you put any of these. I don't even think these two things need to be next to each other. Um, and it'll be obvious if you like click on it, when you right click it, when it's done, it'll have the lava um, amount in this UI. And then we just build around. And I don't do the corners. You can if you want. And you can check it because this will be, you know, glowing. And when you right click it, it will come up with a thing. Um, and then this is where your lava will be. So like if we add lava real fast to it, it will then show up in this, right? So that's how you know it's reading the lava amount. Um, you can stack these on top of each other to get more uh, space. I think you can also do it with... Um, you know, windows. You can put lava in windows. I don't think it necessarily counts it if it's not in a uh, specifically a seared tank. But you can still just use them as storage to then move them in if you want. Uh, but anyways, we do that. And then what we do is um, I think I usually eh, that's alright. I think they need a pickaxe. I'm so not used to being in creative mode. Uh, pickaxe. All right. Um, okay, so on this layer, what we want to do is make a couple of more things. So we need a way to get the metal out of the forge. So what we want to do on this layer is we want to make a bunch of drains, which we do by um, doing this. Do, 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 do. That's one of these, hold on. Yeah, there it is, all right, all right. This, this pattern here, seared drain. Um, I usually go with six, but you don't need that many. Um, realistically, you only need one. I usually go with two at least because you can use one for basins, which is this pattern. Uh, and you can use one for this casting table. And what these two things do is they let you drain. So these basins let you drain the molten metal into blocks. So you can directly go into blocks and not have to go through the ingots every time. And then the table lets you go and do the actual casting when you have like a pickaxe cast or something like that um or ingots or whatever so it's just this is just a faster way to like smelt a bunch of metal all at once whereas this is like the more specific what you actually want to make with it um you place these by placing them facing on the outside and you'll see like this large thing on the inside and then what we also need to do is make the actual faucets that go on them um i'm gonna make more seared bricks because it gets very expensive okay uh, and we made six so we're going to make six of these and then you just put them on the outside like this okay and I'll finish making the basins and stuff as well because I have six spaces I don't want to have them go to nothing okay and again, you don't need this many. I just find it's easier because if you're doing a whole lot of metal all at once, it's kind of annoying to um, do that. Uh, I think I'll also make this side a bunch of glass as well. Because why not? Okay. And then we just want to finish off the front here. Oh my gosh. Hold shift if you want to click on it and not do what I was just doing. Okay. And then... Now we can also see that this has more space because initially when we have uh, like only one completed layer, it only has space for nine. Every layer gives you nine more slots. Uh, so once it figures itself out, it will give us 18. Um, we can add another layer, which I'll do real fast, and it gives us even more. 
I'll add, I'll just make these normal for demonstration. And then now it'll give us even more slots to smelt once it's, uh, you know, it has 27. You can't see it because you're scrolling, um, but there's 27 slots here. And then the more you add, every single layer you add gives you nine slots. So it's just better if you're doing a lot of metal. If you need to smelt a lot of stuff, you can make it really tall, um, which is fair because mod packs, you end up with a lot of ore and smelting ore in the smeltery gives you two ingots per ore versus only a smelter, just like a normal furnace, giving you one per ore. Um, so it's more efficient to do it in this forge here. Um, so now to give you more of a tutorial on how to actually do the metal, we'll do just normal iron real fast. And let's get some lava going. So say I want to smelt the iron in here. So what you do is you just kind of shift click it in here. It will take time in order to melt down all of the iron ore. Um, and let's also say like, let's see, can we make... Um, can we make an alloy with iron? Because this would be a better example. I have to find the, the page here. So, the so this is what we're making. We're making molten iron. And then there's a page here for alloying. So yeah, we can make invar with nickel and that. We can also make aluminite. We can make, uh, you know, night slime if you end up having purple slime ever. Um, invar is usually pretty useful. So let's just do that. So nickel... Nickel ore, hello. There it is. Okay. So we gotta wait for this to finish. Alright. Um, I'll just put in like a little bit. So let's put an eight or nine rather. Um, so we just smelt the twenty um yeah, twenty-seven ore. So this gives us six blocks worth, right? So now we can go over here and we can cast this. Uh and it will fill up, it'll have to cool, and then it will let us then just right click the basin and get the block again. Um you can start filling it by right clicking this faucet as well. So now it'll say we have five blocks worth because we just used one here. Uh, and this way we get, um, you know, we can do it a lot faster. It goes faster than smelting. And again, it's more efficient because we did 27, which would normally have been three blocks, but we got six blocks out of it. Uh, and the progress on the top left, you can, it'll actually tell you how, when it's done. And then you can right click it. And now we just have an iron block. Um, so now that this is done, it will start making an alloy. And this is what the Ford is really good for. So we made a whole bunch of, you know, nickel. We didn't make enough nickel to use all of our iron, but now I made a bunch of invar. Um, we have two in here that aren't going to melt. Whatever's on the bottom is what goes into the faucets. So if I right click the faucet now, it'll use the iron. If you click on something though, it will move it to the bottom. So if we want to do the invar and not the iron, we just click that, we put it on the bottom and now we can get the invar out, right? So that is the basin thing. Now, if we want to actually cast something, can you make invar tools? Is that a thing? Yes, yes you can, okay. So let's say we want to make invar tools. What we need to do is we mean make casts. Um, and the way you make casts is you use gold. Um, and I'll, I'll just show you, it's easier to do it than explain it. Um, so you use gold, each cast, which is like a, it's like a physical item that you have, kind of like a, a plat pattern, but for the forge, is, um, uses two gold, so we'll be able to make three with this. And for certain metals, you can't actually use these patterns, which we'll get to in a minute as well. Um, you have to use casts. Alright, so now we have the gold. We want to use the gold, so we'll click on it, put it at the bottom. So the way you make the cast is you take the thing that you're trying to cast to and you put it in. So if we want to make an ingot, yeah, if we want to make an ingot cast, we have to put a ingot. It doesn't matter which ingot, so just do a cheap one because it will destroy whatever you put in. And then we use the gold on it and it will use this and it will cast whatever it is. So now we have an ingot cast. So now if I want to make an invar ingot, I move that to the bottom and I can use this to then make ingots from it um so yeah that's cool and everything and then now we can just use that and then the cast itself is reusable you can like pick it up and move it and stuff um so if we want to make a pickaxe for example we need to get a pickaxe head which you can make just like a stone a stone pickaxe head uh and then just put it in to cast it i'll just you know choose a random one because it doesn't matter for me we move it to the bottom and then we 
you know, can make a pickaxe head with this. Right. So now we have that. And then, of course, we can just do the same thing to do that. And this happens with any metal. Um, some metals you can use these patterns with, um, but not all of them. So having the forge is good, especially because of the increased efficiency. And because this is one of the only ways to get alloys, especially at the beginning of the game. Um, and it's just the easiest way to use it as well. See, so now we have our invar, our invar blocks here. Um, yeah, invar is a very good resource. So, that is more or less the forge. The forge is pretty straightforward after you get used to it. Um, that's basically it. If you want to, you know, cast other stuff, you just put it in, you cast it. And now we have an invar pickaxe head that we can use. Um, and, you know, you can use that and <laughs> cast it or whatever. So... I got a little ahead of myself, I will say. So if we want to use Tinker's Construct for, you know, non-metal items, then what we want to do is we want to make a whole bunch of tables, essentially. And I think the book explains this. Um, it might it might not. It used to explain it, at least. I think it just goes directly to the forge, which is super weird. Um, so I'll explain it. So what we want to do is we want to make several um, buildings. So one of them, we make a crafting table and we put a blank pattern on top of it and it's a tool station. One of them is just planks and a blank pattern and that's the stencil table. Uh, one of them is a log and you can actually mix and match which log it is. Um, so if you use like birch, for example, it will have a birch pattern. Uh, I don't know why that's not giving me what I want. So yeah, we do that. And that's, yeah, so like whatever your log you use here, it'll show up on these legs. So you can kind of mix and match and do whatever. So if I use like dark oak, it'll make a dark oak. Um, I might actually be an insane person. I know it does it for some of them. I feel like it does it. Like if I do birch, I think. I want to say it does it with birch. Yeah, it does it with birch. So yeah, you can mix and match and, you know, make it fit your style better. Um, and then also this one's optional, but it's super useful is making a chest. A pattern chest um because like you have a lot of these like patterns laying around and you don't necessarily want them just like in a normal chest the pattern chest makes it really easy so we'll just put them over here so the stencil table can kind of be off to the side and then the parts builder and the tool station um can be wherever the parts builder is what you want to have next to your pattern chest um so actually i'm gonna move some of these real fast actually I'm going to put the pattern chest on the side and we're going to move the tool station to the here. But it doesn't really matter where you put any of these. This is just how I like to do it. Because um, the only thing that uses the pattern chest is the part builder. And you can see that the pattern chest just shows up on the UI on the side here. So then how we, how we build this is we use our blank patterns and we can choose which pattern to make. So like if we wanted to make a pickaxe, um, and this is kind of required to be making the casts of them over here. Because you need to make the cast somehow, and thus you need a pickaxe part first. This is how you do that. Um, so we have a pickaxe head here. And then we have, you know, shovel head. So if you want to make a pickaxe, it's a pickaxe head, a tool rod, and a binding. And you can see that if you go into the tool station, and you click on whatever tool you want to build. It'll say, you know, this one, which is our pickaxe head our tool rod and then our binding and then on the parts builder what we do is we put them whatever stencil we want to build we put it in this area and then with whatever material we want to do it out of so let's do like stone or something um cobblestone specifically uh we put it on one of these i don't think it really matters which one of these you put it in um and then we can make the thing so now we have like a stone pickaxe head we can make then a stone tool rod. We can make a stone binding. And then in order to finish it off, we go into the tool station and we click on the tool and then we kind of just shift click those in and now we can make a stone pickaxe. Um, you know, it has all of the stone stats, which is not very good, but you know, it is what it is. Now the good thing about Tinker's Construct though, uh, and also by the way, this is this is what you use to make metal tools as well. So like this pickaxe head, we would use the same situation there. Um, but the good thing about this is that you can mix and match. So like we have an invar head here. I can make like a wooden, I can make a stone binding and then a wooden rod if we want. Uh, which is, you know, it looks like a stick. It's actually a wooden tool rod. 
and we can mix and match. And we can make a tool with all of the, um, you know, all three of the unique abilities of those things. So we have ecological, we have magnetic too, and we have cheap. Um, so this is how you can customize your tools. And that is what the massive amount of stuff in this page is for. Because this tells you what all of them do, more or less. So like electrical steel does shocking. And then if you mouse over it, it'll tell you, um, you know, on which head or like, you know, handle or, or whatever, uh, which thing it has. And then it'll tell you what it does, more or less. Some of them are kind of vague, but I'm not going to explain all like 500 of them. Um, so you can use this. You can go through and just kind of plan out your tools and see which one you want to do. Um, you know, for example, I personally like magic wood, which is somewhere. Um, which makes it where you can have more um, modifiers, which we'll get to right now. I'm seeing I can find magic wood first. Here it is. Yeah, so magically modifiable, it adds three extra modifier tools. It doesn't stack. So if you make, you know, if I make two magic wood parts and add them together, it won't add six. It'll just still add three. So you do want to mix and match because most of them don't stack. Um, so you want to make them different. The... Stats on this page are also kind of important. I mean, they're less important. Generally, it is like the head is what has the base durability and like the base stats. The handle, the modifier is a multiplier to that durability and then it adds that durability as well. And then this just also adds the durability. Um, but this modifier will multiply the total durability by the modifier to then make your you know, last final durability uh, uh, before modifications. Uh, it's not something you need to super pay attention to. The two more important ones are the, like the mining speed and the attack. And the durability is important, but you can get around that with modifiers. But yeah, I, for example, like magic wood, and then I do uh, something, I don't know, like steel or electrium for my head. Um, or copper is actually very useful because you can get free XP when you're mining. I actually use copper a lot because it's also really cheap. Anyways. So now that we have a tool, which we'll make this tool. Now that we have a tool, we can add modifiers to it. So if you go to this tool station again, and you put it in the middle, that's what this initial page is for. It shows you how many modifiers you have, which is three. It shows you your stats and like the level of mining that you can do. This is the level that the like tool is not what you can mine. So like this is the level of a diamond pickaxe, I believe, which means we can mine obsidian. It doesn't mean that we can just mine diamonds, I think. It means we can mine obsidian because the stone pickaxe has the, le the level of iron. Um, I might be an insane person. They change it a lot and I actually don't know. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try it. I might be insane. I'm, I'm learning myself. Let's get some light up in here. Because I remember it used to be kind of backward like that, and it was weird, I thought. But, uh, okay, so yeah, it says currently harvestable. It, it's not in the top left there. So I apologize. It's actually backwards. So this is what it can mine. So it can mine up to diamond. This can mine up to iron, um, and so on and so forth. My bad. So anyways, modifiers. So we have three modifiers, and that is what this page is for under modifiers and it shows you what all the modifiers are um it's relatively straightforward i don't think i need to explain most of them you know redstone makes it faster this makes it where you get more fortune basically um and the fortune can stack with certain things so like for example uh you know luck it makes it where essentially you have fortunes like if you mine diamonds it'll give you more than one on average however there is a tool material that auto smelts for you and i believe it's fiery wood yeah so you have auto smelt. Um, so basically when you mine an object, if it's an ore, it will smelt that ore for you. And then the luck from the lapis modifier will stack with that. So if you mine like iron ore, it in theory should give you the first tier of iron. Um, and if you only mine iron ore and you have luck, fortune three on average, it'll give you like two point something of iron ingots each time. I will say, I have had a bug where it makes it where it smelts it twice, because you can smelt iron again to make refined iron. And I've had it where I smelt iron ore, and I get refined iron, which isn't isn't what I want. So be careful, but like things that can't be smelted again, like gold or diamonds or whatever, um, will work just as, as well as you think it would. Um, the way you add the modifiers in is you just add them into the thing. So let's get some lapis. 
I'll do blocks because why not? And importantly, it'll tell you how much um, of the resource you need to max out that modifier. So like, for example, we can add redstone and you can see our mining speed going up here. However, until we get up to 50 redstone, it won't use another modifier. The whole modifier can go up to 50 redstone, right? The second we go over 50, it'll make another another round. Um, and it won't let you go above one modifier per like thing, just so you don't use it all. To so do this, we put it back in again. Now we can see it's up to 100 and it only have one modifier left. Um, so you can add partial modifiers, but you can't, you know, go above it without using another one. Lapis is the same way. Lapis, uh, Lapis is different because it only uses one modifier, and I believe it tells you this. Um, sometimes it tells you that. Okay. It does not anymore. Anyways, it says up to 60, but it will only use a modifier for the whole Lapis itself. So now we can add more, and then we can add another one, and then we can add another one. And we have all 360 now instead of the initial 50 it said, but we only used one modifier. Um, so really, it, everything's different, so just check it. When you're adding it, just check this page before you confirm it by uh, making it. Um, the reason that they break up Lapis is because you have like luck one, two, and three, and that's what gives you the fortune. Um, and that's how they break it up. So it shows you like the part where the partials are broken up there. Because you can get like fortune one, fortune two, fortune three, which we have now. Um, so that's what that's broken up. You can also add like a diamond to it to increase durability, for example. Um, if you're going to use like magic wood or paper or something for more modifiers, the diamond is pretty necessary. So we have 740 durability and we can go up to 1240. Um, and also the diamond brings up to obsidian mining level. So the level that a diamond pickaxe would be able to mine. Um, another important modifier that I'll explain uniquely is the sharpening kit which is fortified. Um, now these let you increase the mining capabilities, so like the level of the mining of the pickaxe without changing the base stats. And it also does not require a modifier. So it takes steel, or sorry, it takes flint and whatever you're making it out of. Um, the sharpening kit, what you generally do is you make it in the forge. Um, so like you make a, you make a sharpening kit cast, you put whatever in the, you're gonna make it out of in the forge. I usually do obsidian because it's the easiest way to get another mining level. So, and you can just put obsidian in the forge as well. I'm not going to do it because it takes forever, but I'll grab the sharpening kit real fast. Do, 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 do. Not refined, just normal obsidian sharpening kit. And we're going to have a flint as well. And it will let us increase the mining capabilities so now it's up to cobalt rather than just obsidian because originally it's obsidian um and we don't have any modifier slots anymore but it doesn't take a modifier so we can still do this um and you can add as many of these as you want so like if we then upgrade to something that can mine above cobalt we can just add it directly to the tool we don't have to remake the tool um and it'll override the one we just added um so that's a way to do that otherwise most of the modifiers are pretty self-explanatory you can also like you know go to a different world and test them out um some of them are mining based, some of them are attack based, because like obviously like necrotic wouldn't be needed on a pickaxe necessarily, unless you're making an attack pickaxe. Uh, knockback also, kind of deal. Uh, but there's a lot of them. I would say, you know, just go through them, kind of plan out your tools. And yeah, that should be it, more or less. The, yeah, Tinker's Construct's pretty big. Um, there is armor, which I don't think I'll get into now, but if you want to do the armor, you take this book and you add it uh to another stencil i think yeah which all my stencils over here and then you can do the same thing with armor and it gives you a whole nother book for it right i won't get into it but that's something that you can also do i think i'll do this in a different video and yeah but as far as tools goes this is more or less it you make these four structures and then you make the forge and then you should be good to go that's all you need and then you can make the casts and you can just kind of play by ear with what you want to make um you know, you don't need to use the casts. I generally make tools that don't require using the casts, but they are useful to have, especially if you want just like ingots of something or if you want to make something specific with them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. All right, guys, that'll be it for this episode. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and let me know down in the comments if you have any issues or questions about some of the stuff in the mod. Some of that stuff can be pretty vague, so being able to ask questions is nice. 
Um, also, feel free to post your favorite tool materials. Uh, mine are magic wood, copper, and generally paper. Um, and I would kind of like to know what other people generally use. And I'll see you next time.